Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is... Pat O. Pat O. How was your weekend? It's still kind of the weekend, right? Right. No, you're right. Um, I got drunk for the first time in 10 months. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> which means last night, yeah, which means today I'm hungover for the first time in 10 months. Oh and, no. Uh, yeah, I forgot what this is like. Not really. It's kind of like riding a bike. You never forget. But um, yeah, we had a Memorial Day get together and um it was good it's always nice when people come out you know but it's a numbers game you have to invite 40 people so that 15 show up but that's you know that's the way it goes man you know um and it was a good time and uh that was it and then today i saw top gun with my mom it was pretty sweet oh you enjoyed that i did good there was something else i wanted to bring up too but i I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I hung out with my daughter. What else did we do? Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> okay. How was your, How was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. Um, I uh, you know, did the last drive-in thing. Um, right. I did watch that. I have shut. I got Shutter again for Joe Bob. Good. And, and this weekend was the first time that I actually put it on, and I watched that that pig movie. I didn't see the second one, but I saw the, the I had the first one on while I was uh, reading and laying in bed. Sure, I, yeah, yeah it good. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's I mean, it's always you know fun if if you if you're not already, you should um get Shutter to um subscribe and and watch the last drive-in on Friday nights with uh, Twitter. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, I did that. Um, and then I did actually, um, Jeremiah had, um, Jeff Craig on from the map in black. We had Jeff on the show. Um, you know, great, great guy. Um, and, uh, he does Jeremiah for his Patreon. He does this thing where, um, he's got like an after show. You can actually watch him record the show live as a patron for a Bigfoot society podcast, and then go to the after show and interact with the guests that he had on or whatever. And, um, and, uh, you know, at that time, it, it was just me at home and I was like ready for the last drive in, which I tend to dress up for. And so I got on there and it was kind of hilarious because I'm dressed as Freddy Krueger on the Bigfoot Society podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, um, it, without it, the horrific burns, without the horrific, yes, it was, yes. um, <laughs> you know, it, but it tickled me. It, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious. So, um, I did that. And then, um, Saturday I, was like gonna do all kinds of things i'm like i'm gonna do things today and then i didn't because i i sat down to watch one episode of, of the new stranger things and and i watched all of it so <laughs> yeah i haven't i watched one episode of kenobi and uh we didn't watch the, the second one two of those dropped have not touched stranger things yet i think that'll be uh that'll be my goal for this week but yeah. good stuff yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, if you like Stranger Things, you'll like this season, I guess. Yeah, cool. Unless you just hate life and you like to bitch about things, I, you know, which some people on the internet do, so I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so I did that, and then I, you know, I went and I, I took time for myself, and I hung out with lots of, lots of people, um, which Good. was very significant for me to do, and um, I, I'm going to say I'm very sorry to everybody for um, kind of slacking on the Patreon a little bit. That sucks. I should not do that because you guys pay for that. And uh, uh, but, you know, I, I guess I can't bet you guys got the got the big dick alien episode, um, you know, the lost episode of the show over there. So, I mean, definitely check that out. Um, I just need to pick up some other things. But I've also been very I'm, I'm still sick. I've been sick for like going on two weeks now. So. <laughs> That's not yeah. really great. Um, I don't think I'm contagious. At least I hope not. I went and hung out with a bunch of people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, bitches. You know, so, somebody brought uh, a six pack of Corona to my uh, get together last night. And I remember they walked in with it and was like, hey, I brought some Corona just in case you guys don't have it. And uh, I didn't get the joke at the time. I was like, oh, I don't drink that shit. Just throw it in the fridge. And then this morning I opened the fridge and I saw the Corona and I was like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh very funny very I'm very brought the damn corona yeah we um yeah we did a uh you know i went to last night i went to a um party and i saw lots of people yesterday but I, I ended up at a party at the end of the night um at my usual haunt and um one of the girls in the group brought a guy from work and uh 
This guy was insufferable. You know, he wasn't that bad at first, but the drunker he got, the more he was kind of just trying to show off. And, you know, he became that guy with too many stories. And it's like, none of us know who you are. We, we're not invested in your character arc. You're oversharing. Can you just stop? <laughs> was you he know? on cocaine? No, he was just drunk. And, okay. uh, you know, it was just, it was very, don't be that person. Don't Don't get invited to you know that's one thing about people people like it when you want to talk about them that that's what people like when you are engaging with them or whatever um so when you spend the entire time talking about yourself and telling all of these um you know stories about yourself i shouldn't say this he told me he was going to listen to the show maybe i should cut this part out but (laughs) (laughs) Um, welcome you know, but but Steve, the next time you come hang out with us, um, you don't have to, <laughs> I, I try to call out my name. Us. Yeah, you, you don't have to. You know, we're pretty easygoing people. Um, none of that was necessary. You know, but uh, <laughs> anyway, just don't be that guy. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Dial <laughs> it back a notch, Steve. Everybody knows a Steve. You know, everybody's been to a, a get together with a Steve, and you know, he was definitely he was being that guy, and. You know, I'd hang out with him again. Who knows? He's probably just very nervous, and I I get that, too. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so I I understand the the hungover angle, so. Yeah, that you know what? Honestly, the the thing that I liked the most about when I wasn't drinking, and this isn't like, I'm not going on a tear. Like, it was fucking Memorial Day weekend. I had people over. I drank. I'm, you know, I'm going to go back to mostly not drinking, although I have a shit ton of beer left over, so I don't know what we're going to do with that. But, um. You know, one of the things I liked about being sober is that I, when I went, when I would go to social functions, um, I never had to worry about being a Steve. Yeah. And because I was always in complete control of myself, I knew what I was doing. Obviously, I know how to talk. I know how to navigate socially, and I was always on top of my game, uh, very well behaved. Right. And last night, like I'm not, I didn't get out of control. Like nothing terrible happened. But I don't remember the end of the night. You know what I mean? And I assume that I didn't turn into a Steve and fucking start jawing my mouth about shit. But, like, you never know. You know what I mean? So. Sure. I mean, I you know, that's I completely understand that. My friend, uh, one of my friends is a hypnotist. And we we kind of talked about this um, in, in an upcoming Patreon episode. But um, anyway, uh, one of my friends is a hypnotist. And I showed up and I, I wasn't drinking. I was going to drink, really. Um, I, I wasn't going to spend more than like an hour. I'd already not been home all day. Um, but anyway, I show up and uh, my my hypnotist friend comes up to me and he's very drunk. And let me tell you, this guy never gets really drunk. Usually, like he's the he's he's one half of a couple, and usually he's the sober one. Um, yeah. But this time he was not; he was the drunk one. And he's like, he's like, you know, there's people that um, have been able to hypnotize people and and have them get drunk off of water. And he like kept talking about it. And he was like, I'm trying to debate if I should try to like hypnotize you to get drunk off your water. <laughs> <laughs> like, you well you need to hurry up and decide because i'm getting ready to to drink <laughs> so <laughs> um but but he didn't not this time but hey i would i would try it out yeah <laughs> so anyway um but no overall good good memorial day weekend um yeah you know it was uh just fine so there's that rock and roll um i, I have a little news to share um i just wanted to talk about this weird video that popped up um people are still mostly talking about the uap stuff right now in the community i feel like um i feel like there hasn't been too much excitement um except for this video that popped up and um it's just some lady who uploaded this video on youtube and and she had titled it titled it as like a skunk walking like doing like a handstand walk um and it does not look like that at all i i don't see the correlation there it looks like a little hairy thing i mean it looks like it kind of looks like cousin it did you i yeah, see the video it, did you watch it you no know, i watched it yeah it looks like a um i thought of it like an uh like an anamorphic like cartoon hedgehog character or okay. something you, you know what i mean like if you were to see like a cartoon where like animals walk around on two legs like i could see where she would think that it was an animal walking upright but i don't think that makes sense yeah. If you see, you know what I mean? Like, I don't either. No, it looks like there's only two legs. Right. Um, and I don't know if skunks walk around like that, do they? Is that like something that's been established or? I mean, there's not, I mean, I'm sure they can, um, you know. And they can I'm, rear up, I'm yeah, sure. But I'm like, sure. I don't, 
that was that thing's fucking walking around. So. And it's doing a good job, right? It's not like it's yeah. stumbling or anything, but there's no like tail or obvious markings. In fact, it looks like it's all one color. And that yeah. color probably isn't black. I mean, it's it's a black and it's like like a ring video, right? Secure a security cam video. Yeah. Uh, but you can t- kind of tell when something's black and it doesn't look black. It looks kind of more brown to me. Um, dark or colored, but not black. And it just doesn't it doesn't look like a fucking skunk. I don't know what the hell it is, but, <laughs> but it doesn't look like And a where skunk. was that where was that taken? Did it say in the vid- uh, in the video? You know, I don't think it I don't think it does say in the video, but I don't really know. Oh, Redlands, California. Oh, okay, so it does say that. Well, that's the weird thing about it. So, like, you look at this person's YouTube channel, they literally just created that that channel just to upload this video. And, you know, is that because they are sharing it around with friends to be like, look at this weird fucking thing on my camera? Is that because this is a hoax that they, you know, perpetrated? But, you know, I don't know. So I can't find this person on social media. I'm going to dig around and try to find them on social media and ask them directly about it um you know but then the title of the video is not it wasn't to you know it wasn't like weird creature caught on camera or you know or anything like that it was very mundane well but that's so that's i think a red flag in and of itself it's got a very mundane title that seems to so okay if you everything this person did create a youtube account to upload the video right like we're i didn't have a youtube account before sure but i caught this weird thing on camera um which actually now that i think about it i have a youtube video of a skunk in my driveway on my youtube channel because <laughs> we were drinking in the garage one night and a skunk walked up and i videotaped but is it, it an, is it an actual no movie? it's being normal it's a normal skunk but the the fact that this person did that seems to suggest that they knew that there was something odd about this this video odd enough to where they felt the need to share it and they felt the need to put it on youtube where they weren't normally a, a youtube content creator I have all my short films on YouTube, so I had a YouTube channel anyway, so when I had this weird video of me and my buddies drunk fucking with the skunk, it made sense to just throw it up there, and it really, I mean, what? probably I didn't even have to, who cares, right? But the fact that this person went through the trouble to do it suggests that they knew that there was something incredibly unique about this video. However, the way they titled it, once again, seems to play it off as being like a random skunk video. Right. So there's there's a disconnect there. Like, did they really think that this was a skunk handstand walking? If that's the case, why would you upload it? And then go through all the trouble creating a YouTube channel and uploading it, blah, 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 and then sharing it around, right? I don't know. It, I, I, that doesn't quite jive. Those two those two aspects seem to contradict each other. Right. It, yeah. It's an interesting, you know. So maybe it is. That's what it, I, I guess I'm saying. It could be a hoax because, because of the contradiction. It makes it seem fishy. Um, I hope someone does like a like a uh, like where they zoom in and shit or like do like a pull frames out of it. Yeah. You know, I don't know how much better you're going to get with like a ring cam video, but, um, you know, people pull apart videos all the time and do like photo work with it. And I, I would love to see someone do it with this. Sure. Just uh, kind of see if there's anything, any parts missing because it's very fast. It's right in the corner. It just kind of comes into view and then out. I mean. You know, yeah. I can't imagine, you know, if it was somebody that, that made this, that made it a hoax, well, what the hell was it that they used? A puppet, maybe? I don't know. You know, what yeah. is that? It, it, it wasn't their dog. You know, what was it? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's another that's another piece of it. So I don't know. Um, you know, and more research, I think, needs to be done on it. I just, just got sent that video today. Um, so I haven't really, I haven't had the chance. I mean, I'll do a little bit. I'm no fucking IT expert, but I mean, I, I can do a little bit and try to see what's, you know, if I see anything different, but probably not. I'm probably, it's, I'm probably still going to be baffled. So <laughs> yeah. there's that, but you know, I wonder, do they think it's a skunk because they had other frames of the video that aren't uploaded? And so you can like clearly see, oh, okay, well, it's a skunk, you know, there are more pieces to it. Um, that's why I just personally I just I would prefer to just reach out to this person and, and ask them that right um, get some context like what's the area like was there been a history of animal activity has there been a history of paranormal activity like what's what's this person's past been like what's their experience with shit been you know is it specific to the location is it specific to the person you know what I mean it looks um, like Captain Caveman <laughs> it does <laughs> isn't that what it looks like 
Yes, you're absolutely correct, and I love that reference. <laughs> Great job. You know, that's what oh, it was, fuck. guys. It was Captain Caveman. Oh, my God. You know, there's a... Uh, there's what that. show was he on? Do you even remember? Like, I know the character. He had the club, and he flew around with the club, and he had a cape. Uh, Back in those days, it was just kind of the general Hanna Barbera where they all kind of um, did mini crossovers, and I think Captain Caveman might have had his own couple of shows, um, and then he would make appearances on other people's, right? On other Hanna Barbera character shows, you know. Yeah. Hey, have you seen the? Um, it's so funny. We were just talking about Banana Splits a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Have you Have you seen the shit for the Winnie the Pooh movie they're doing? I kind of, but I've, I've heard that was a, I don't, I didn't know that was real. No, it's real. Yeah. Cause Winnie the Pooh hit public domain last year because oh, it's oh so my. old. Okay. Although, and it's not, it, it's considered a Disney thing, but it's not necessarily, a, it, you know, Disney made the Winnie the Pooh stuff, but they don't own the rights to it specifically. And I guess it hit public domain and someone did a slasher movie with it. And, uh, Jesus. Pooh looks terrifying. And then they, they did a picture of Piglet. Uh, I saw a still of that, and it looks like uh, I don't know. Now they might they might fuck it up like they did the banana splits thing, but uh, I'm definitely at least checking it out. Yeah, it looks it looks like it's gonna be pretty fucking crazy. Well, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd I'd still watch it. It's probably not gonna be good, but I'd, I'd still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think I'd have to figure out who's involved, and is it just a no no nothing nobody who's making it? Nothing that where it grabbed me. I mean, they, yeah. I. I doubt it's a first-time filmmaker but it wasn't like oh it's you yeah know. not that there's anything wrong with first-time filmmakers just you know it, 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 is right. there any big names attached to it i guess was my question um yeah not none that i none that rung a bell with me or that i remembered but i could be wrong but i mean things like that that don't have big names do kind of usually tend to not be very good so we'll see maybe yeah. they'll blow us away maybe this will be the next big name in cinema because of their winnie the pooh, pooh slasher movie is it a <laughs> slasher is it a paranormal what's the uh, you know, I'll read about it. <laughs> I, I don't think they've released. Uh, it's called Blood and Honey. Uh, I don't know how much details they've released. CNN's got a fucking story on it. That's crazy. That's the name sounds very student film. It's written by Rise Frake Waterfield. I have no idea who that is. Okay. Maria Taylor, Amber Doig Thorne, Danielle Scott. It could be. It could be British. Um. Okay. You know what I mean? Because Christopher, I think they were fucking British or something. Who knows? We'll okay. check it out. Well, we'll check it out. All right. Yeah. Well, that was my uh, news for the week. Pat, did you have anything you wanted to share for the news? No, I'm proud of myself for thinking to bring up the Winnie the Pooh thing. <laughs> is that what, is that the thing you were tra- you were thinking about earlier? Okay. All right. Well, that, we're gonna say that was. Um, that's okay. Um, it's better to have a short intro with this topic because we have a, a large topic. <laughs> So, um, let's uh, get into it. Pat, so, oh, before you research this episode, what did what the hell did you know about Skinwalker Ranch? Ah, I didn't research this episode, so not Good only did you. I know nothing coming into it, but I know ev- it's something that I think always confused me because um, I would hear it brought up by people, and it it they always were talking about it like I should like oh you know Skinwalker Ranch and I. And, I never knew what they were really talking about. Um, It's been referenced a lot. It was, you know, something that's been referenced countless times on Coast to Coast. But I don't think I've ever heard, like, a proper episode about it. Um, I know that there's, like, alien stuff. and But skinwalkers are a Native American. I know, like, I know what skinwalkers are, right? It's basically, like, werewolves or, like, the Native American um, uh, version of the... uh, people that change shape and shit right and uh but i know that there's like a ufo connection and then i think the place is haunted like there's ghost shit too like um yeah i but i don't know the specifics on any of it sure no that's okay that's very honest well good then i guess we will have an authentic um storytelling time um so that'll be great so yeah skinwalker ranch is is very 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 famous in this community it's uh well it's one of those things that everybody's heard about um you know it's like, it's like bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster or roswell you know it's, it's, sure. a, big, it's a big story everybody's heard about it um but you're probably right probably a lot of people unless they they are particularly fascinated um 
you know, haven't taken the time to really sit down and, and research this place and figure out what it really is. Um, so we'll kind of, I guess the best way to talk about it is to kind of go through um, the history and, uh, you know, from present day to now. So, um, you know, you're, you're right, Pat, kind of, uh, you know, about skinwalkers. I mean, skinwalkers are a very um, Native American <laughs> Uh, thing in particular the Navajo so a skinwalker um, or as as they call them the Yinaldushi is um, a basically a bad shaman it's like a, it's like a shaman that's turned evil um, mm-hmm. they have the ability to shapeshift into particular animals um, most of the time they're, they shapeshift in like coyotes or wolves but they can shapeshift into other things um, but they're, yeah, it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad medicine man. Um, and so back in the day, um, two native tribes were at war with each other. The Navajo were, were at, at war with the, um, Ute tribe and the Navajo cursed the land that Skinwalker Ranch is sitting on. So it's in, um, I think it's U, Uinta, Uinta County, um, Utah. And they curse that entire region. So the Ute Native Americans to this day won't go there. Um, they actually refer to it as the path of the skinwalker because, again, the Navajo, you know, cursed it with, with skinwalkers. So they won't go there. Um, so there are other instances of sightings and things like that taking place kind of in the um, the Unitah basin there that kind of runs along the river native americans and a lot of tribes also believe that water carries evil um which is a very interesting thing when you start looking into instances of high strangeness because you have a lot of things that um happen near rivers and stuff like that um perfect example obviously the mothman sightings and the ufo flap that that you know centered around that whole incident happened all along the ohio river um, you know, and, and, and you'll find this all throughout high strangeness history, but, um, you know, they, they do kind of tend to believe that these spirits come in and out of the water, travel through waterways, um, as evil spirits, um, to do their bidding, I guess, or what have you. Um, but that's super interesting. You didn't know that? That, that, yeah, that water would, would act as a negative magical conduit. I mean, like I've seen Constantine where like he puts his feet in the bucket of water to like, and holds a cat you know and can see like the the uh the ghosts and shit but i've never i thought because a lot of times you see like my like vampires can't cross rivers and shit or like water is like a way to block um i don't know lord of the rings when they're getting chased by the wraiths or whatever they can't cross the river um I've, that's interesting that they, they well, think if that it water carries. is cleansing then you would i mean then i i believe the idea there is that when water cleanses these things it it holds it it takes oh. it into itself right and then therefore you know and then water is constantly moving throughout the planet all waterways are essentially connected unless they're man-made um you know and and so these evil spirits can then escape from the water or what have you um, you know, I, I believe anyway is, is the idea of it, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's just a tidbit of information. So anyway, rich Native American history there. But, you know, let's be honest, every fucking part of, of North America has rich Native American history because, you know, they it's they, they lived here. So. Their land. yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, <laughs> let's just be real here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it really didn't start to pick up too much steam until the 1950s, um, particularly, particularly in 1951 when um, a science teacher by the name of Junior Hicks had a UFO sighting in that area. And it wasn't just him that had the UFO sighting. It was also his entire class of elementary school students. Wow. Um, and, you know, in broad daylight and, you know, he became very fascinated with this and was like, well, what the hell is that? So he went on to really start, you know, putting boots to the ground and figure out, well, what the fuck, you know, come to find out again, it wasn't just him and his students. It was other teachers and other students and other people in the area. People had been seeing these lights in the sky and, um, you know, again, broad daylight. Um, and then that's kind of when the homework was done on the native American land, um aspect of it like that's when that lore kind of really became 
significant to the research of this. There really wasn't that time beforehand. Again, there are previous sightings of regular people seeing things. Um, there's a very famous one of a French missionary, I think, in like the 1700s um, that, you know, had a weird UFO encounter. And I mean, there's so many, um, you know, in, in this area. And so, you know, but but Junior Hicks kind of started popularizing this idea of this area having some weird um, type of activity going on but nothing really came of it just like you know every other researcher of these things <laughs> um, you know and then um, it, things weren't necessarily quiet but the popularity of this place really boomed um, when a family uh, known as the Sherman family moved in in 1994 um, to a farm that that is now what we call Skinwalker Ranch um, but you know they just were a regular ranch family you know they just wanted a nice place to live and they bought this piece of land and um you know thought it was really nice and whatever so when they first moved in they noticed weird things around the house um on their first walk through of it apparently almost every entrance to the home was you know had a, a multiple deadbolts on it um and, and not just like multiple deadbolts like the front door and the back door had deadbolts but then like the outside of the house also had them and so it was kind of all around and then they also found like these big heavy chains around the house um which they you know assumed maybe housed a couple of dogs um you know on, on, on farms and ranches you typically have a lot of dogs um and you know they just assume maybe that's what it was for um or at least this is what the sherman family says <laughs> so right <laughs> um you know they found all this stuff but on the first day and they were moving furniture into the home um they had a strange encounter with a with a wolf and it wasn't just like any wolf it was a, a big fucking wolf i mean they said it was probably three times the size of a regular wolf um and it kind of came out of the tree line and kind of came running up towards them but it wasn't aggressive towards them as a matter of fact it, quite the opposite it was very friendly um and was just kind of hanging around and they were moving like they had you know cattle and stuff and uh, a calf had stuck its like snout through the fence and the wolf took it as an opportunity and bit down on the snout of this of this calf and wouldn't let go um so terry sherman the, the father and one of his sons run over and you know they're trying to scare it away um one of them is is tr hitting it with like an axe handle and it just does not give a shit it wants that meat <laughs> and um so then they pull out their gun and shoot it and nothing happens um it didn't bleed they didn't see where it was actually shot they said they shot it point blank in the side and nothing happened um so then they shot it again um and at that point it had released the calf but didn't run or anything it was just kind of confused um but even though they shot it again again nothing happened so terry went to the car and got a shotgun out and decided to shoot it with that surely a shotgun is going to blast this thing now and uh shot it it was shot three more times and still no blood no wounds no nothing and it just kind of retreated back into the woods um they the, the terry and his son went to go follow it there was no blood trail they couldn't find it again um very strange allegedly so wow any thoughts on on that particular story wow so i mean that would mean that it was a ghost right Maybe a ghost yeah spirit of yeah some but, sort. but at the same time it was corporeal enough to damage the cow or the calf right, right. but non-corporeal enough to avoid getting shot or, or taking damage or something yeah that's a that's a head scratcher yeah very um very interesting and then the, the you know so after that the family would uh continue to have weird experiences um just all the time <laughs> all the time um they would see strange lights in the sky um they constantly had this strange musky smell in the air um they would hear disembodied voices talking but couldn't really understand what was being said and they said that the, it sounded like the voices were coming from like the sky um they oh my God. yeah they would hear um 
weird noises that seemed like they were coming from the ground uh like heavy machinery in in the ground um and things like that but can never really pinpoint it they had constant constant crop circles ice circles um constant cattle mutilation was all the time um Mm -hmm. their dogs would uh, were always on edge um one time uh the wife um gwen gwen sherman she came home from the grocery store this is just an example of some of the weird things um she came home from the grocery store she was unpacking the groceries putting everything away and you know she had folded up the bags went to go use the bathroom and she came to the kitchen and all of the groceries were back in the bags on the counters (laughs) yeah that's shitty i'd be pissed that's a dickhead move (laughs) why why for why you know why they're just fucking with you right um you know so but things like that it happened a lot um you know and then you know again they were losing money on all this cattle that kept dying i mean they had like um i i think i read that the yield for reasonable cattle lossage when you're a rancher is about one percent of your cattle um they had lost 20 percent of their cattle Mm. in a year and that you know it it was significant um but you know the family they were losing money on this they hated it and so at one point um terry was outside and he so like i said they saw these strange lights i was like what it's like one of the things that people will report seeing in this area are these orbs of light floating around and there were two different ones that they saw they'd see orange orbs which would like move around weird and spit out other orange orbs it would like replicate other orbs and then just kind of move around and then leave um but then they'd also see these blue orbs that didn't spit out orbs but they kind of seemed more um sentient they kind of seemed like they weren't just kind of moseying around spitting out orbs they kind of seemed like they had missions um and one time (laughs) terry terry was outside with uh his three dogs and you know he saw one of these blue orbs and so he ordered the dogs to go chase go chase it um and they did the dogs went and chased the orbs they chased it into the tree line and then he heard the dogs yelp and he went to go investigate and the orb was not there the dogs weren't there but there were three piles of things on the ground like he he believed that the dogs were incinerated by this orb holy shit yeah yeah and they're gone and so and he never saw the dogs again Uh, oh my god any thoughts on that incident (laughs) that's heartbreaking i'm a i've i spent most of the weekend alone with my one dog and uh my wife was out of town and she brought the one dog with her and i stayed with my the dog i like my three-legged dog and i i realized at some point that this thing is going to die and it will have a adverse emotional effect on me oh yeah and I can't imagine your dogs being fucking vapor. I would like it's like losing a kid. Yeah, you know oh, what I mean. I Especially in those. That. Yeah, yeah, on a ranch where like they do shit, like they help you herd the cattle or right. whatever. They're obviously at a well trained where you commanded to chase orbs. You know, I don't, I don't have that level of training with either of my dogs. Yeah, you know, they would probably fucking shit themselves and run away. <laughs> but, uh, but then they wouldn't get vaporized. So that's yeah, exactly. Well, they're smart, you know but um right <laughs> uh, man that's you know what that's crazy because that is that seems like an alien thing i think this is what always confused me about the skinwalker ranch story i was like is it aliens or is it ghosts so like the 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 putting the groceries away that seems like a ghost thing or putting the groceries back in the bag that seems like a ghost thing but getting vaporized by an orb definitely seems like an alien like thing. an alien thing right yeah right and and the stories are 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 just extremely abundant with with this family and the things that they went through they lived on the property for two years um the you know one time uh terry saw headlights out in the front yard he thought maybe it was a tourist that was lost um he said it looked like it was an rv and he went outside and was you know started yelling out hey you guys lost or whatever and and then the rv lifts off the ground and then shoots off into space <laughs> holy shit <laughs> yeah and so, i mean and again this is constant um they've seen and, and like the crafts that they've seen aren't consistent they're not the same they've seen ones that are as big as football fields engulfing the area um they've seen just numerous disembodied flashes of light um they they saw one that they said looked kind of like like a refrigerator um <laughs> I, I mean again these are all very um this was just normal this was their life 
Um, but after the dog incident happened, you know, they were already kind of, they were already considering fucking leaving. Um, but at that point, they were like, we're going to fucking leave. We're losing money. Yeah, you're here. in danger. Right, yeah. right. Now these things are like, you know what, we know that they attack us or whatever. Um, I guess that the cattle mutilations weren't seen as violent, but okay. Um, so they decided we're going to leave. Um, so there was, a, there was a man by the name of Bob Bigelow who kind of took up an interest in, in the property and the stories. And he ran an organization called the National Institute for Discovery Science, um, or, or NIDS for short. So we're going to refer to it as NIDS from now on. Um, and he was interested in the property and, w- and went to the, to the Sherman family and said, look, I'll buy it. Um, and not just I'll buy it from you, um, also you can keep cattle here still. We kind of want you to keep cattle here because we want to be able to study and kind of bait, you know, use the cattle as bait, but like, you know, whatever you use, use. And so the Sherman family jumped all over this. Right. Okay. We we get, uh, he bought the property for $200,000 in 1996, um, you know, and and they kept their cattle there. And so the Sherman family would still come back to to tend to the cattle and things like that. Meanwhile, this NIDS group, um, um bob bob bigelow had kind of you know vetted out these people they weren't just like ufo enthusiasts or whatever these were actual scientists that he had spent a lot of years and a lot of time finding they were people that were skeptical that did not believe in this stuff and you know they came in guns a blazing thinking that there were all these explanations for these things so what he had done was he had kind of set up a lab on the property um, as well as they had installed a couple of watchtowers on the property. Um, they had installed fences, cameras. Um, you know, the point of this was to get evidence of this high strangeness happening. Now, the scientific team, they had people that would live there, that lived there. Like, they were the field workers or whatever. But then they also mm-hmm. had people that would come in and off the property um, to study various things and work different equipment. Um, so he, you know, this was, I mean, this was a big project for something like this, especially in the, in in high strangeness. I mean, this is the holy grail of it, right? If we could just own a piece of property that we know all these things happen on, hire all these scientists, you know, um, it was actually revealed at one point that, that, um, Bigelow, I didn't put this in my notes. I should have, um, Bigelow had received money for this project from a grant from the U S government. Wow. Uh, that studied right that studied things like this very you know akin to uh you know project blue book and things like that um so he actually had money i mean he had all the money to do this and was doing it and decided that you know i'm going to catch evidence of this um but again the, the team of scientists that came on um you know their initial thought was well let's look at the area are there plants nearby that um that drop spores that cause hallucinations is the family just crazy are there um you know plates underground that can cause uh visual um you know illusions and and then obviously hallucinations with that i mean they checked marked off all the boxes of what this could possibly be scientifically and there was none of that they found none of that on the property so going back to what they did find right because again big operation this was a big sure thing. um so terry and, and gwen would still come onto the property and I, you know I've, I've got a couple of stories of kind of what had happened there terry and gwen one day were were there and uh they were tagging cattle because again they were leaving their cattle there and <laughs> um they had just tagged a a calf and you know on the ear and walked away um for about 45 minutes well one thing that kind of when you read these stories and again i can't possibly share them all on this one show but when you read these stories there's one thing that's consistent when a strange event happens the smell overtakes the property this weird musky smell um and you know again they're they're out there it's not just them there's the nids people are there too um and they walk away from this calf and they do other things and about 45 minutes later they notice the mother of the calf was kind of acting weird and lipping around and and doing weird things so they kind of went to go investigate her but then when they walked over to her the calf that they had just tagged was on the ground and the only thing um uh, that remained of this calf was the head 
the spine and a couple of ribs. Jesus Christ. Um, the tag, the ear that they had tagged was also missing. So within a 45 minute period, something came, did whatever to that thing and then left. And there was not a single drop of blood on the ground. Most of this cap was missing and there was no blood. Um, so that was interesting. So of course, you know, the NIDS people came in and they tried to find, you know, footprints or, you know, they were testing out like the area and seeing if there's, you know, any, um, electro, you know, magnetism happening as a radiation, you know, and, and there was none of that. Um, you know, and the, and the local vet took and did a necropsy and they just said, there's absolutely no way that this was something that was done in a 45 minute period. There was o- over 60 pounds taken from this cap. There's no way. Right. You know, so thoughts on that one? I, you know, I, you almost got to wonder if it's the people. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. You know true. what I mean? Because um, who, that's, you know, if, they, if they're saying there's no way that could have been done in a 45 minute period, well, then either the people are lying about the time frame and what a coincidence it happens when they come back. Or, um, so I, 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 I've done a little looking at this while, um, well, you've been talking i've been listening i've been listening but like i pulled it up so i know a little bit more than when i said 20 minutes ago that i knew absolutely nothing um i'm very interested to see what these people that are i I like the what's what's cool about this story is the uh level of seriousness that it's it's being shown i can't think of um too many other paranormal things that are given this with the exception of maybe like Loch Ness monster or something where it's you're actually seeing scientific um research being done to try to get to the bottom of it uh I'd be really interested to see what they come up with moving away from this family you know what I mean um with third parties well we'll get we'll get there yeah yeah we're we're not there we'll get there um I'm I'm drooling at it I'm (laughs) salivating uh i get it i get it all right so um another instance that happened um with 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 terry involved you know again and and it is important to note when the family members are involved and when they're not um was that um he he was kind of hanging out on the property and with a couple of the nids guys and they saw these giant yellow eyes out in the distance um and you know in a tree they didn't know what the hell it was so terry shot at it he was like i am not absolutely not letting this thing take another one of my my cattle i'm shooting this fucking thing and shot at it and they all heard it hit the ground whatever whatever it was it fell from the tree and hit the ground so they all rushed over there and there was nothing there but they saw those same yellow eyes out in the distance now the thing about the eyes was that to me it seems like there's a big difference it's it wasn't just like eye shine initially they thought that they were headlights so these eyes were like actually glowing, actually illuminating. And they saw them again, even further out. So they went and went to go try to hunt it down again, um, shot at this thing again. A couple of the people got a good look at it. And what they described as this thing being was a bipedal canine, the size of a man. Okay. And, you know, they shot at it again and it just disappeared. It was gone. They actually took footprints um they you know had pictures of the footprints and then cast of the footprints um of these um basically paw prints with large um you know claw indentations in the ground and they were uh there was two prints and they were they were 20 feet apart so i don't know if that's just because it's a large stride or that's because that's where the two footprints hit it could have been that um but yeah i mean that's what they saw this huge um creature and the the actual footprint itself was, as a matter of fact, I think it was like fourteen inches long. I mean, they were they were massive. Um, Jesus. Yeah, and uh, then it just it disappeared, and that was that was that story. Um, but so, and and this one is really really fascinating to me. Again, these Nids people aren't these enthusiasts. They don't believe in this stuff. Right. Um, they are actual scientists. Um, with real world degrees and uh anyway um so <coughs> one night two of them were hanging out uh on one of the watchtowers and um one was photographing just general things in the area right and then another one had night vision goggles and while they were out there they could both see in the distance one of these orbs 
And so they were looking at it. Now the guy, you know, with the no night night vision goggles could see that it was kind of illuminating. It wasn't like crazy bright or anything, but he could see it. And then the guy with the night vision goggles um, could could see it very brightly in the goggles. And he starts freaking out. And he's like, it's not a light. It's a tunnel. And I can see through to the other side of it. It's a tunnel. And the guy's like, what the, what the hell are you talking about? And as that's happening, he starts just losing his fucking mind. He says there's something crawling out of it. Some weird black humanoid type figure was crawling out of this tunnel. And at that point, when it crawled out of the tunnel, it was like something out of the movie. It crawls out of the tunnel and starts running towards them. And he can see that it's running towards him. But the guy that, that doesn't have the goggles cannot see that. And as it's running towards them, they both can hear the ground actually interacting and crunching underneath the weight of this thing. And it just runs mm. past and then it's gone. Holy shit. No, this isn't, this isn't, you know, uh, the, the Terry, this isn't Gwen, this is a fucking real life scientist <laughs> right. who's been to college, who doesn't believe in this, who thought that maybe this was all just the cause of mass hysteria with the family and who saw this. Um, that wasn't the, that wasn't the first time that they had seen something like this with the night vision goggles. Um, they had seen um a creature in the distance and it had talked to them and said had talked to the night vision goggle guy um and said we're watching you it said that he could see this creature in a tree in the distance on his night vision goggles the photographer had no idea what he was talking about and then when the guy kind of came to when he stopped watching that creature he couldn't remember what he had seen it was only relayed to, to the photographer guy while it was happening so it was only going off of that second hand account but the night vision goggle operator had didn't remember it <laughs> so. that's interesting yeah yeah man so obviously it's there's something about that area that is it's it's a thin spot the veil is very thin there very right thin there. yeah so you have stuff coming in and out from other dimensions um but the the memory him not being able to remember it that is uh that's super interesting because how would they how would something erase your memory like that right how does that influence me and you know the one with the thing crawling out of the portal you know because they, we talked about the orange orbs that seem to spit out other orbs it wasn't spitting out other orbs or what is was it spitting out creatures and it's just you can't see it with the naked eye oh my gosh you know so is is there a history of that um so an, another or how many of these things are fucking running around right <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? like... especially in that area um uh, uh, you know what well, i've got i got uh, one more really interesting encounter that happened and this did involve um terry and gwen um they were just at the ranch i think they had just experienced another cattle mutilation um they were getting ready they were leaving and while they're leaving they had four prized bulls on the property and um terry well gwen had said to terry I just can't imagine if anything ever happened to those bulls, you know, we just would be fucked. And uh, they left. And when they came back, all four bulls were gone. And so they were kind of looking around the area. They're like, what the hell happened? Um, they go and they have this, they heard some noises in this old, old trailer that nobody ever used. Um, and uh, Terry was able to peek into the trailer and saw all four bulls in this trailer. Now, these bulls were stuffed into this trailer like sardines. They would have never walked into the trailer on their own. And so the bulls started, he said when he looked at them, they were like in a trance. They, they weren't reacting at all. They were very calm. And then all of a sudden, the trance kind of slowly started kind of lifting away. And then the bulls started losing their shit, started freaking the fuck out. So right. they got them out of there. But the door to this trailer was not only locked it was wired fucking shut wired shut and there were cobwebs on the door as if it had just ne had never been touched in years because it hadn't been nobody had been using it and those weren't observations made by just terry and and gwen that was the nids researchers that that's that's the observations that there's no way for these bulls to have gotten in this trailer and especially not on their own they wouldn't have just walked in and shoved themselves in there and they couldn't have anyway because there was no way for them to get in and they can't operate doors they don't right they don't have thumbs they have 
<laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> Bowls yeah. can't open fucking doors. They can't open uh, fucking yeah. doors, right. Every, everything else is inconsequential after that, once you take that <laughs> into account. But. So that was uh, another, I mean, the Bulls ended up being fine, um, but, you know, it was just a very, again, a very weird, um, you know, there's no evidence of what happened. So anyway, all this weird shit happens. And those are just like the most notable stories, or at least ones that I found particularly right. interesting. Um, so much more. But um, what had happened was activity started dwindling on the ranch. Um, and after a while, um, as of 2004, um, the NIDS people left. They, they sold the property and left because they decided that it, it wasn't lucrative anymore. It wasn't, they weren't finding anything. The activity had all but went away. It was gone. And they, they didn't know why. Um, so that was kind that was the most comprehensive research they put into it so now nowadays um right. a, a guy by the name of i think his name is brandon fogel fogel yes brandon something um he's bought the property and th- he won't let anybody on it <laughs> except for camera crews except for camera crews <laughs> that's absolutely a thousand percent correct <laughs> yes um yeah those are the only people he wants on it. Now, he claims that he, obviously, there's something going on here. He wants to find the secrets, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but the only people he's let on there are people from, like, the History Channel to do this, like, show that they've been doing or whatever. Um, which is not, TV is not science. Um, it's interesting, and, and yes, we should sell it, but TV is not science. Um, it's just not the way that works. So, um, yeah, that, uh, you know, there's other things, too. Before the Shermans owned the property, it was owned by another family for 60 years they owned it. Um, And we kind of talked about, like, the deadbolt things and stuff like that. Now, this family, once all this came out, um, the matriarchs of the family, you know, the matriarch and the patriarch of the family, they've died. But the kids have said that absolutely nothing weird ever happened to them, ever. In the 60 years they were there, nothing ever happened. Um. But other people have come forward and said that that's just not true. Um, They had actually had also cattle mutilations and they had experienced um, weird visitors, just people showing up. And that's why they had things dead bolted and stuff because these weird people would show up all the time. And um, they were just ashamed to talk about it. And there was like an instance, I guess, where there was a guy coming and working on a fence there at the house and um, he just fucking disappeared and he was gone for three days and doesn't remember what happened for those three days he showed up three days later had no idea it had been three days and that was, i mean that was that but we don't really have a way to verify these stories because those people are dead right um so that's kind of a hot button topic i mean that is very much up for debate on whether or not that was true because like you would think it sounds like you know the kids are insistent it, it's not the property it's the shermans and maybe it is the Shermans, and that's why it also disappeared. Oh, yeah, that seems kind of weird for people to generate international portal activity. You know what I mean? But no, because they said that when the, the, the people that lived there before said that there was stuff going on. Right? It, 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 it predates the Shermans. No, so the the people that lived there before never said that stuff was going on. The kids said that nothing was ever going on, but people have come out claiming to have been friends of the family and and neighbors and things like that that claim that yes, there was things going on. Oh, uh, if you go to the um Skinwalker Ranch website, uh, Skinwalker hyphen Ranch dot com, it does it says something about there was a sheriff in the eighties that uh. Um, a deputy sheriff who spent incidents on the ranch in the 1980s. This includes, yeah. So there's, I don't know. I, uh, if you, if it is, like I said, something specific to that area where portals are opening up and things are coming through, it would make sense that it would predate those people moving in. Right. What, what, what about those people was triggering all this stuff? I don't know. Um, cause you know, do they have this, when they go other places, right? When they finally move, does this shit happen at their house? I'm sure in their new, you know, whatever they moved to, or, or now that they right. don't keep cattle there anymore, does it happen where their new cows are at? I'm guessing not. 
So maybe it was just a certain person at a certain place can create certain types of activity, right? Like you need that you need the gatekeeper and a key master to come together and fucking open up the door. Um, I don't know. You know, it definitely it's interesting because there's a there's an intelligence here that um, seems to be at play with some of this phenomenon. It, it's not just like random shit, right? It's the stuff with the groceries the stuff with the bulls right it's antagonistic but it's not necessarily evil or you know like that wolf ate the cow but it was biting on the cow but it never attacked the people you know what i mean uh the the guy with the infrared goggles sees this thing come through a portal and run right at him and run right past him they're never attacked yeah you know guy disappears for three days but then he's brought back right Um, yeah no human deaths i believe have ever occurred on the property yeah so it's definitely and and when you think about it if you if you were an invisible monster uh what would stop you from from killing people indiscriminately why would you do you have a code of morals you know what what's or, well, you, 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 like and plus this thing is studying who's ever on the property then it has reason to keep it alive right who's studying who are we there to investigate the ranch or is the ranch there to investigate us right right and i think that that would probably um make make the most sense you know i don't um it's hard to find uh, the stuff with the nids people like that that is i i believe very legitimate now they've, they've come into a lot of scrutiny um because they didn't really do what they set out to do and that was produce evidence of this stuff happening um there are I, I guess I couldn't find them, but there are like pictures and videos of these orbs. These orbs seem to play a huge part in this, but um, there do seem to be pictures and videos of these orbs or whatever. Um, and then, you know, that seems to be it really. And so, but what the what the people, what the scientists were saying with the group is that you know the only thing that we can really tell you is that whatever these things are. They are intelligent enough to avoid us capturing this evidence. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, they are doing stuff just outside. They know where our cameras are. They're doing it just outside of the camera. Or when these things happen, there's a malfunction in the equipment all of a sudden, and we can't capture it. Um, you know, and that's one thing. Why would they hide? Why would they hide from us? Why would they hide from the evidence? Well, I mean, that's a good question, but you have to think because they're they're not here to make waves they're here to do what they do in secret um they're still trying to practice some form of discretion right but there's but there's so that also denotes intelligence right it's not just like oh there's this accidental rip between two worlds and sometimes weird monsters wander in and then die from the oxygen in three days or some shit like obviously you know these things are coming here with intent and you know, they're doing whatever they're doing and they're bouncing out. And, um, I don't know, but then they take time to fuck people's groceries. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) (laughs) that's the other thing, you know, but that, you know, that could be a time distortion or something. Uh, we're like, she fell into a a slip for us. Just that those couple of minutes or for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, because there's no, like that's, you're purely just fucking with people. Same thing with the bulls you know what i mean but that but maybe that's you know i mean the bulls thing seem very intentional to be like don't fucking well, yeah, tell it, us what we're gonna do because we're that's gonna a crazy it. yeah that's a crazy piece of evidence to leave behind too for right. for someone that's that for the most part is trying to practice discretion to then shove four bulls into a fucking trailer, trailer yeah yeah which which couldn't be done any other way with besides like teleportation or fucking magic so like obviously they slip up every once in a while or they get fucking wasted and they're like you know what let's, let's fuck with these, these people yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know what i mean so that shows like that you know that shows that's a flex you know so why do they flex like they they, they try to remain secret they try to avoid uh any kind of concrete evidence from being collected but then they'll do these weird flexes from time to time. And that is more than just now you're talking about personality. Now you're talking not you're not just talking about intelligence. You're talking about almost a borderline you don't know if it's a sense of humor. 
Yeah. Or if it's a form of communication or what, but um it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. You know, Utah. Yeah, I mean, do you ever think about Utah? Do you ever really think about it? No. Right. Only exactly. when I, only when I'm masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, like, mm, those skinwalkers um you know right nobody ever fucking thinks about utah it seems like a very very flyover state um i am very curious to to deep dive utah to be a while um but I, I i can't wait to deep dive utah for our weird world um show um but but because it has something like that that skinwalker ranch is very significant and it's in fucking utah um, and not just that, there's like a legend that like skinwalkers like not guard over necessarily, but they're located at the four corners of Utah. There's like something with that. I haven't really dug too deep into that, but I've, I've always heard that. Um, you know why? I, I think it's because there was a lot of na- uh, allegedly a lot of Native war. But then again, I guess that I would have to believe in Native American, you know, um, folklore to, you know, believe that you know they can curse the land or whatever i don't know if they can i'm not saying they can't i just don't know if they can um, but you know and then what what does that leave you know then at the end or, i mean are we talking something supernatural are we talking that they've made a deal with these uh aliens I, at some in somehow some way and they consider them you know gods or magic of some sort which i mean i guess could be likely um you know because this all kind of ties in together again this this is very cursed land there's a whole tribe of people that won't fucking go near it because it's cursed so i mean well, there's something there up until up until the mid 90s and then it became uncursed there is there is there is centuries of of uh paranormal activity and then, and then all of a sudden stopped yeah and i'm guessing i haven't watched this tv show but this is perfect timing for this episode cuz season 3 just started in may uh so hopefully we get a lot of uh, listeners. Yeah. That's that's why I've been keeping my mouth shut and letting you do the thing. And I really regret making that masturbation joke five minutes ago because this could be a lot of people's first episode. Um, but I would assume that the TV show hasn't. Let me put it like this. I mean, I, I, I pay attention to a lot of this shit. You pay attention to a lot of this shit. If that TV show uncovered anything of substance in the past th- two, three seasons, we would have known about it. Right. And, you right. Know, and it, so it hasn't. And it hasn't. But. But, 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 maybe these intelligent, right, forces that uh, prize their, just, you know, uh, anonymity, right, maybe they thought that it was getting too hot. The water was getting a little too hot and they had to, they had to bounce out, you know, with all these scientists showing up and now a fucking TV crew. Maybe That's true. it's Skinwalker Ranch ain't when it used to be, man. It's it's the fucking yuppies moving in and ruined everything, which is exactly like what happened. Like rich people fucking bought it, and I applaud <laughs> them for doing that um, because that's something that I would think of. Like I, it, it, it actually it was a movie idea I had once, but it was like when you look at what rich people could really do with the amount of money that they have, it's insane that more people don't get more involved and you almost have to think that like I mean, everyone shits on elon musk and i'm not going to bring you know, get too deep into that but that seems like a guy that's trying to do stuff with his money whether or not you agree with the stuff he does fine but he's not just hoarding wealth you know what i mean um whenever you hear about like oh bill gates you know b- bought you know a new computer in every classroom in seattle it's like he could do that with the fucking world with the amount of money he has right these guys can do like major shit and most of them don't they don't really do the amount of stuff they could do um i know george clooney has a satellite i don't know if you ever heard that before where he he kind of he'll send pictures of like troop movements in africa to like the military and stuff um because like the for whatever reason the military doesn't do that but he will he's got like a surveillance satellite that he owns that he put into fucking space george clooney and they he uses it to feed intelligence uh to the military a lot of times with like those like roving like warlords to like try to shut that shit down right so like our 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 military isn't going to do that they're not going to waste their time on that shit right but he he will do that george clooney does that that stuff i think is crazy and i and i love seeing stuff like that so these guys saying hey here's a piece of land that's been haunted there's all this stuff fuck it we're gonna buy it and do a bunch of tests or we're gonna buy it and, and and the tv show thing seems a little schmaltzy but 
I mean, you got to applaud the effort, but I think it comes with the caveat of they may have these things, whatever you thought you were going to study, obviously had an intelligence behind it that knew that you were going to do that and then just left. Yeah, I think that's a good possibility. I mean, I think it's weird. You know, when I go back and I read some of these things, you know, I initially thought, well, hell, it's just the family, um, you know, making up shit or whatever. You know, who knows what's going on there. But, But now that I've read it with this organization of people, um, I don't think that they were just caught up in mass hysteria. Um, I think that they, you know, genuinely went set out to do their job and, you know, they, 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 they proved what it wasn't. Right. And so at minimum they did that, which is really important. You know what I mean? If they had gone there and said, oh yeah, there's this fucking plant that's making everybody hallucinate this shit, then we'd be like, oh, case closed. But they, they, that's not what happened. Whatever. You know, um, it, it's interesting now. And if this is your first time listening to the show and you're here because of this Skinwalker Ranch show, um, things to consider. Again, I'm not saying that, that there's nothing going on there, but the guy that owns it now, if you start asking him questions about having groups of scientists up there, or when you even start asking, well, where does the money for this show go? Does it go back into the project? He doesn't answer. He cuts and runs. He's very hard to talk to, which is odd because well, he's a real estate guy. You know what I mean? He's, and he's probably he's obvi- very busy. Well, he's a nerd too because number one, he bought Skin Rock Walker Ranch. Uh, number two, the shell corporation that he set up to buy Skinwalker Ranch was called Adamantium Holdings. And every comic book fan knows Adamantium is the imaginary metal that lines Wolverine's uh, bones. So that's yeah, what he's Wolverine's a nerd. claws are made out of. So he's a big fucking nerd. So um, I was actually surprised when I went to the website that he's kind of uh, a part of the show. He's like, I don't know if he's the host. I've never seen a single episode. So it's sorry. all based on that. Right. The whole website is entirely based on that show. Right. But he's he's listed as part of the cast and he's right. in some of the pictures and prom- promotional pictures and shit. So that's something that like, you know, you don't normally see too much of where like you have these people that then, you know, I, I could see paying to have these people come in and do this and the idea that you're going to turn it into the show. Well, you're going to have cameras there anyway, right? You might as well, you know, try to make some money on the back end. But uh, I don't know. I don't think you could do, I don't know how many seasons you could do where you don't find shit. It's like the joke about searching for Bigfoot. Um, I'm pretty sure like, Finding Bigfoot has like 11 seasons or something and people still fucking watch it. Yeah, they didn't find Bigfoot because trust me. Before that thing was edited and set to air, if they found Bigfoot, you'd find out about it. Right, you'd know it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? They haven't found it yet. I mean, yeah. 11 seasons and still. They didn't know. find it, and they didn't wait for, to, to release this information to the world until <laughs> Wednesday night or whenever right. the thing airs, you know? Right, right, you would know. Um, you know, that's kind of, that's the way, that, I mean. But, you know, that's kind of the thing with, with this now, you know? What do I think Skinwalker Ranch is now? I would like to i'd like to go there I, of course i've tried to reach out to the guy but you know he oh hell yeah i would totally go respond i mean and and not even just it wasn't like i reached out to him and I'm like hey i want to come to skinwalker ranch you don't know who the fuck i am or what i do at all and I'm, I'm insignificant but i'd like to come there um no i mean i reached out to him and was just like hey you know i know that you you own this now I just would like to ask a couple of questions about it um you know you don't have to answer anything you don't want to no response and i'm not the only one and you know and it's not just you know people like me it's it's bigger people that he won't respond to or again they do get a response from him and he starts talking to them about it but then they start kind of asking again harder questions where does the money for the show go to um what is the aim for this i mean it might not be profitable he might be funding it himself he might have bought this ranch with this idea produced the show himself took took it to the history channel and said hey if i we run this thing and history channel says yeah you can get uh well you produce the show yourself we'll run it and we'll split the advertising or something but why wouldn't he, he might just not say be that? making because he might not be making money out of it and it makes him look like he doesn't really have this great of a show he basically has to pay to play you know no, no one wants to admit that no one likes to admit that they pay for sex you know what I mean? It makes it makes it's just kind of you look like a fucking scrub. I suppose so. so. But if the whole reason that you bought it and, and you're putting this much time into it is to study this stuff and put it out there, then you need transparency. And I, I will die on that hill. Like you need to be transparent. I bet if you write this guy a letter and include some Polaroids That's and say idea. hi, 
I'm a weird goth podcaster and I want to come to your house. Um, I think he would probably let you come over. That's a good idea. Right. I think I'm going to try it. Here's my Instagram. (laughs) Specifically, go look at this part of it. Um. (laughs) These dates. Check out my Instagram on these dates. I'm very photogenic. Let me on your, let me come to your house <laughs> and I'll let you videotape me. <laughs> Absolutely. At, at Skinwalker Ranch. I will film the first porn at Skinwalker Ranch. I, you know no, what? You if, listen, if that's what it takes to get me to Skinwalker Ranch, I will fucking absolutely do it. Right. A thousand percent. I'm so down for that. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't mean it like that, but. I'm meaning it like that, and I'm yeah. saying that. Um, if, if there is a market for this, and you would like to see the first porn video film that Skinwalker Ranch, and maybe even, I mean, I'll, I'll fuck the orbs if that's what it takes. I mean, <laughs> shoot orbs out of your pussy. <laughs> that's where they came from, and they went back in time. Yeah. This is how it, this is, this is how it starts. This, this is, is how like, it starts. You go there, and then that fucking thought. reverberates yeah. backwards through fucking the ripple across the time pond or whatever. I, you listen. know. Anything for science, okay? I'm here for the science. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Man, you, you can know. have uh, people in cow costumes, people in alien costumes. Hell, yeah. I'm already thinking about this porno that we could do. You know what I mean? It'll be a tentacle creature. Just instead of the, the hunt for Skinwalker Ranch, it's the cunt at Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'll, 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 I'll shelve that one for now. But um, but I'm very serious also. So, I mean, if, if you're All listening... Right. Brandon Fogel, Fugel, Frugel. I don't know his fucking name. What's his last yeah. name? I mean, I think not Fogel. Uh, Fugel. It could be Fugel. Fugel. Right. Whatever your name is, my guy. I, don't I guess. Shit. Yeah, I guess we could have uh, looked it up. Looked his name up. Look, I know right. his name. I just I don't remember it. Phonetically, yeah. Phon- no, right. I mean, I I know it. I start typing it out. Google finishes and it's fine. In our Twitter or whatever. Um, right. You know, I don't think it's that important. But anyway, my point is, back to what I think is going on now. I think nothing's going on now. I think that whatever, I agree, I think whatever was there is probably gone. And now this guy is just milking it for everything it's worth. And other people are doing that. Um, George Knapp uh, put out a book with one of the the NIDS guys. And, you know, he. I will read that book after this. Of course. Because that's that's exactly who I want to hear talk about this. Yes. The NIDS guys. The NIDS guys, yeah that's the story that i want yeah. right and that's kind of you know that was also a big boom in, in this story and i'm not necessarily saying that george knapp you know um was monetizing on the event but it sounds like he was but you know i think a lot of people now are um and you know because it is a big story and it is so topical and and we can't deny the fact that the things were happening there that can't be explained um that was followed by a team of scientists it is the most it's the closest we've gotten to actual scientific research of high strangeness oh and you know what i didn't realize this one of the uh investigators of the skinwalker ranch is bud hopkins who wrote intruders uh which was we talked about on yeah. one of the patreon episodes so very interesting yeah yeah very that interesting, is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so that's what I think, Pat. Final thoughts on what you think about Skinwalker Ranch now and then? Uh, I'm gonna read that George Knapp book. I think I'm. Uh, it's interesting. It's also interesting to consider the whole, you know, paranormal phenomenon kind of turning itself off when it realizes it's being investigated too closely. Um, I think that that makes sense, and I think that we some of this behavior is obviously demonstrated that there is an intelligence at work here. So if it's an intelligent force that's trying to avoid detection or at least keep a somewhat low profile, why wouldn't it pick up and leave at a certain point? Because people were looking too closely. I mean, it explains why, you know, people were still searching for Bigfoot, why he hasn't been found, you know, maybe it's not just a big dumb ape. Maybe it's, it's, it's very intelligent with powers that we don't fully understand. Yeah, and uh, that's why so much of this stuff is still elusive. And there's, you know, it's not necessarily that someone's hoarding all the answers; it's that uh, we're purposely being kept in the dark by the phenomenon itself, and that opens up a whole other realm of possibilities to consider. You yeah. Know? So this this good episode really it, twisted uh, my melon. 
I mean, it fuels my theory. You know, these things will never find out what they are. We will never find out what they are because we'll only know when they decide to tell us. And that's right. just that's just the way it is. And and that's why some people kind of know because they've been. I mean, God, it sounds so weird, and mystical, but I swear to God, that's scientific. But they've been bestowed something, <laughs> and that's why they know. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they've necessarily been spoken to. Some people claim that they have. Some people are contactees that claim to have you know, lifelong. I, I did see something uh, where a lady's claiming that she's dating an alien or whatever. They've been for like a year or something. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if she is or isn't. That, that part doesn't matter. Um, but I think some people kind of had been bestowed with this intelligence and maybe not necessarily in a conversation that they've had with these things, um, but just kind of given it. And well, she thinks they're dating. I mean, the, the, yeah, the, he alien, the be... alien's like way more casual about it, but she yeah. she's convinced they're in a relationship. He's like not. He's like not wanting. She's like, I hope we get married. And he's like, I don't. Yeah. Um, We're not going in that direction, honey. I'm you sorry. can't even come to my house. Like that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, read about that lady, I guess, if you want to. Just yeah, you can Google alien date lady dates alien. Hey, and if, shit. if he never lets you in. You're the side piece. Right, if exactly. If he never lets you in the apartment, you're the side piece. Right, if, she's if not allowed to go to his house because that's where his family's at. <laughs> exactly. I, I fucking, I know this one all too well. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, you know, but that's that's my take on it. Again, we just, we won't know until they tell us. It doesn't mean we should stop chasing after these things. I think that we need to continue to spread the knowledge and the fact that these things are happening um because whatever it is they are spirits aliens whatever the fuck was going on at skinwalker ranch i think undoubtedly something was happening there right you know i don't right. think it is anymore um but but yeah i think it was and i think that you know we'll just never fucking know until they tell us what was happening there so there's that all right all right then well good episode um yeah and uh i don't think i have anything else do you, do you have anything else am i forgetting something uh See you guys next Wednesday. All right. See you guys next Wednesday.